Hey everyone, it's Tira with Rent Mason and Leaf Cutter Bees. Today I am in Boise, Idaho. It's close to 100 degrees out here and we are out here checking on our Leaf Cutter Bee boards and I thought I'd bring you along today. This is my first time experiencing over 100,000 Leaf Cutter Bees. Uh, all very happy to have nice clean nesting material to nest in. So I thought I'd bring you out here today. I'm here to get some great video of leaf cutter bees because at home it's really hard for me to get them because they're so fast. And you can see they are everywhere right now. So I'll back up. I'll show you. They don't bother me. They're just fine. They're just looking for their little nesting holes. Uh, but the sound is amazing. I love the sound, the hum that the leaf cutter bees make. So I am gonna transition, I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna show you some of these bees up close. And I'm... All right, I wanted to show you a little video of how sweet these little bees are. They don't even bother me. I'm standing right here. I'm in the path of where they need to go to nest. So they're kind of bonking into me and then they're moving around, but they're not gonna bother you. They're not gonna swarm, they're not gonna sting. They're just sweet little bees just nesting. That's all their purpose is, is to pollinate and nest and lay the next baby up, next generation of bees. So these are our leaf cutter boards. Each one of these boards has 2,000 holes drilled in them. And you can see if I hold it up, you'll probably see some of them say, hey, that's my home, bring it back. So all of these holes will be completely filled with leaf cutter bees. And what we do with these boards is a lot of the farmers that we work with love to put these boards out in their orchards and their crops. And so these bees are gonna be helping to pollinate your food and alfalfa crops and all sorts of amazing things that our little summer bees pollinate. These little bees are your summer pollinators. They emerge in 75 degree temperature, but they love hot weather. So if you live in a hot state, Leafcutter bees are your bees. Um, I live in the Seattle area. My leaf cutters haven't emerged yet. We're getting close. They typically emerge in the cooler states, end of July, early August. So if yours haven't emerged yet, hang tight, because they will. But today I'm out in almost 100 degree weather. It's really hot out here. And I wanted to show you the leaf cutter bees. currently standing in an alfalfa crop here in Boise, Idaho. And for those of you that don't know about alfalfa, our little leaf cutter bees saved alfalfa crops. They are remarkable pollinators. Um, the smell of these flowers are so sweet. The smell out here is just amazing. And these little leaf cutter bees are the only bees that can pollinate alfalfa. These little purple flowers have a pistil on them. And when the big bees try to pollinate it, the pistil whips at them and it makes the other bees fly away. But leaf cutter bees are so teeny tiny, they can pollinate all these small little purple flowers everywhere. And I'm on this field trip to Boise, Idaho, because I am out here with Jim and his son, Kelton. And we are helping with our leaf cutter boards. We've set out huts all over Boise, Idaho. There's 120 huts out here. We put these big boards out with 2,000 holes. At one of our sites, we released 100,000 bees. Out here, we've released half of that. I think there's about 50,000 bees here. And this is what a, a leaf cutter bee hut looks like. There are thousands and thousands of bees. If you can see, they're flying in these. We just put these out. They're empty now because they were full. And so we've just provided them new nesting material. All right, we are at another site in beautiful Boise, Idaho. And again, we are removing the full blocks. And Jim is putting in empty blocks for the little bees. You can see how busy and active they are out here. Um, we put the bird wire up just like we teach all of you uh, so that the birds don't come in here and have easy access for easy food. Um, again, that's chicken wire, two inch in diameter. We use that for mason and leaf cutter bees. But you can see all these amazing little bees. Super happy they just got new nesting blocks. All right, we just stopped off at another leaf cutter hut. And that is Jim Watts, our owner down there. He is emptying the loose leaves that uh, they've all emerged. So we want to get rid of the empty cells that are uh, that the leaf cutters emerged from. And then you can see all the leaf cutters. 
I'll flip this around and show you. All right, so here is this bee hut. There you go, you can see some of your leaf cutter bees getting ready for next season. And then you can see all these little bees. We are out here servicing all of our leaf cutter bee huts. We have over 120 all over the area. And we are taking care of these sweet little leaf cutter bees by uh, providing them a lot of food to forage and then coming out here and pulling their full nesting blocks, replacing them with empty nesting blocks. And as I'm out here, I wanted to show you where your leaf cutter bees come from. This is how you get your leaf cutter bees. Whether you order the pollinator kit from us and we mail you the mason and leaf cutter bee block together in early spring, or you order the leaf cutter block that we send to you in summer. As you can see, there are three rows that you get. We take this cardboard off before we mail it to you, and then we send you your leaf cutter bees snug inside the leaf cutter uh, block because they're so fragile, it's really difficult to send leaf cutter bees in loose leaf cells. When companies do that, they have to incubate them and then there can be all sorts of issues and problems when you're incubating leaf cutter bees. But these bees are nice and snug and then you put them in your black house and then they start to emerge after they feel the 75 degree weather in about six to eight weeks. So um, I live in the Seattle area and my leaf cutter bees haven't even emerged yet. Um, mine will typically emerge at the end of July, early August, because it's cooler there. For our hot states, like here in Idaho, it's almost 100 degrees today. These bees are super busy and loving it. So I wanted to show you where we put all of your blocks. We have several in here. These are your bees that we're gonna be sending you for next year. And because they are uni, uh, remember the video I did for voltanism, where you have univoltine, which is the mason bee, one generation. Leaf cutter bees are bivoltine. We take your blocks when you send them back to us in the fall and we harvest and clean that generation that you send back to us to make sure that they are all healthy the next generation. And then those loose leaf cells, we sort through, we clean them out, and then we release them back here in Idaho for them to go back and um, have an amazing habitat to enrich and pollinate and refill brand new sterilized clean nesting blocks that then you put out in your yard. All right, everyone. Well, that's a wrap from Boise, Idaho. We are at our last leaf cutter hut that we just cleared out the uh, full blocks and replaced them with empty. And Jim gave me a little surprise on our last hut that we visited. This is what happens when they don't have empty nesting material. They go and look for other natural holes in their habitat, like this paper wasp. So you see the little leaf cutter bee nest inside there? That's what happens, and this is why we come out here and we replace the fulls with empties to provide more nesting chambers for them. So thanks for coming along on this journey to Boise, Idaho. It's been so much fun for me to learn this what, fourth generation, third generation family business of Watts Solitary Bees and the Leaf Cutters and Roger Watts who started this business many, many, uh, many, many years ago. So happy pollinating everyone. Bye.